Hello, my name is Jeffrey Franck, and today I'm going to be talking to you about an introduction to disaster triage. Firstly, the University of Alberta acknowledges that we are located on Treaty 6 territory and respect the histories, languages, and cultures of First Nation, Métis, Inuit, and all First Peoples of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our vibrant community. I'm an emergency physician at the University of Alberta Hospital and the research director in the Department of Emergency Medicine. I have a master's degree in statistics and I'm a visiting professor in disaster medicine at the L'Università del Piemonte Orientale in Novara, Italy, as well as faculty at the European Master in Disaster Medicine. I am an employee of the University of Alberta and I'm the CEO and founder of STAT59. We make statistics software, but I will not be talking about any of our products today. Objectives of this short lesson, well first, to have a working definition of triage when it is applied to patient care, to understand the difference between triage during daily operations of the emergency medical systems and triage during a disaster, and to name several different options for patient triage. So what is triage? Well, triage is really about categorizing patients for priority of care. And in general, we're looking at the aim for the most benefit for the most people. But there are multiple ways to do this. And you're going to see that there are multiple models of triage that exist, and that it's going to depend very much on the underlying patient population, which is going to be most effective and most safe. So the triage, the word is developed from the French word trier, which simply means to sort. And this was really developed as a need to prioritize care during battlefield settings. And uh, Dominique Jean Larray was the chief surgeon for Napoleon's army. And he was one of the first people to say, hey, you know, maybe we should just treat the most severely wounded patients first. Because prior to that, it was really basis, based on your rank. John Wilson, who was a British naval surgeon, started to look at the balance between resources and capacity and to focus treatment on where it was likely to be most effective. And he brought in the idea of deferring both minor wounds and also deferring devastating wounds, where it was thought that no matter what was done, there was no, pa no possibility of salvaging the patient. One of the first models of triage that many of us are exposed to is the START triage, which stands for the Simple Triage and Rapid Treatment Model. And this is an excellent choice in cases where our capacity is limited, in which cases we have to decide how can we do the most benefit for the most people. And here we'll see the, the protocol is actually pretty simple. First, the question is, can you walk? Because if you walk, you are moved into this category of green or elective and they walk away from the scene and we're going to treat them later. If you can't walk, we assess for respirations. If there are no respirations present, we're allowed to do a jaw thrust or a chin lift to see if we can, can allow the patient to, to develop respirations. If they still have no respirations, they're considered black or expectant or not salvageable. If the respirations are present, then we look at their rate. Is it greater or less than 30 minutes? And then we look at the radio pulse. Is it absent or present? And we look at the patient's ability to follow commands. And through there, we can sort them into basically four categories. Green, which is elective. We can treat them anytime. Black, which is expectant. We're not going to treat them at all. Red, immediate treatment. And then yellow, delayed treatment. Now, I, I look at this as a very simple way. It's sometimes hard for me to picture that type of uh, protocol, that flowchart in my head. Uh, but what you can always do is sort of look at it this way. Well, everybody who can walk away does so, and they're green. Then you check the airway, the breathing, the circulation, and the disability of mental status or mental status of the patients. If they have airway, they're breathing, they have good circulation and they can obey commands and those are your yellow patients. If they have nothing, no airway, they're not breathing, no pulse, and they cannot respond to you, they're black. And if one of those A, B, or C, or Ds are abnormal, then those are your red patients. So this is your military type triage where we are assigning patients to this expectant category. 
So what's the problem with that? Well, unfortunately, there are several problems. And the real downside here is in this difficulty of assigning catastrophic cases to the last priority, your black or expectant management. And this is really useful only when there are massive casualties and limited resources, which is very, very rare. This is really untenable and very hard for inexperienced officer, triage officers to condemn a patient as unsalvageable. It's very hard to walk up to a patient, look at them and say, oh, you know, they cannot maintain their airway. Therefore, we're not doing anything. Just move on to the next person. And this is really tough for inexperienced people. And remember that disasters are rare and experienced triage officers are rare. Most of the time, the person doing the triage at this point is not going to have an experience. And if catastrophic patients are treated last, then minor patients are treated earlier, despite the fact that they could wait. So one of the scenarios you really don't want to be in is when you are doing the triage and the first 10 patients that come into your department or your medical post are really, really sick. And you look at them and you say, wow, you know, the first 10 patients, we've got them, they're, they all look unsalvageable. They, we do not believe that they will survive. So we're moving them to the black and you move them to the expected care area and you don't treat them. And then you wait for the sick patients who you are going to treat. And then you find that they're not there. And what arrives then is ambulatory patients who need stitches or need fractures set, but could have waited. And then you're thinking to yourself, well, I should have treated those black patients more aggressively. And that does happen. So one of the caveats I think with any of these military or disaster type triages is that they really should almost never be used for patients who make it to the hospital. These are really good for battlefield situations where there are limited resources. So in Vietnam, they use a different model. They use, looked at things in a different way. Catastrophic cases or those that were really serious actually bypassed all field treatment, treatment and were transported directly to the hospital. And any patient who made it to the hospital was considered initially salvageable. So in, they were never put into the black category when they arrived at the hospital. They were put into the red category, number one priority. Be, to sort of combat this problem with what to do with the black patients, there has been this mass casualty operative procedure or the MCOP triage, which has inserted in between red and yellow a blue category. And these are catastrophic patients that are unlikely to survive or they need extensive care. So in this model, you would treat the critical patients who are likely to survive if simple care is given within minutes. Those get treated first. Your second priority is your catastrophic patients who need lots of treatment but may survive if given this extensive care. Then you're like then your yellow patients who are likely to survive even and you have time with them. And then your minor patients who are likely to survive even if care is delayed. And then the black is really reserved for patients who are dead, absolutely no vital signs. It's useful here to sort of compare what do these things look like compared to a, just a normal triage that we use in day-to-day -day situations. This is the Canadian Triage Assessment Scale, which is the scale for triage that we use at the University Hospital and is used pretty much everywhere in, throughout Canada in emergency department. And here our patients are divided into first category, second category, third category, fourth category, and fifth category. Your first category are your resuscitation patients. Your second category are your emergency patients. Third category, urgent patients. Fourth is semi-urgent. Fifth is non-urgent. But you see that this model does not actually have in any place, does not have black or expectant. And one thing just to be aware of is the NATO triage model will use the colors of T1 or red, T2, which is our equivalent of yellow, T3, which is our equivalent green, and T4, which is our equivalent of black. So 
To summarize in this quick lesson in triage is that really we should reserve military type triage for field situations and only when resources are truly overwhelmed, which is very rare. When we're in the hospital, once, once patients make it to the hospital, then the use of the hospital's usual triage is actually preferred. And one of the things to remember is that we are still always ha expected to provide the standard of care, high standard of care, do our best care, both from a legal and an ethical perspective. And remember that we are still professionals, so we are still required to provide care to patients who arrive to the hospital. So in summary, in this lesson, the we hope to have a working definition of triage when it's applied to patient care, to understand the difference between triage during daily operations of the emergency medical systems and triage during disaster, and to name several different options for potential triage. I hope that this lesson will pull you well on track to developing your own patient triage plan.